from the CSI Today News Desk at the College of Staten Island. Welcome to the CSI Today Talks Podcast with your hosts, David Pizzuto and Terry Manns. The CSI Today Talks Podcast is your connection to the College of Staten Island with the newsmakers that make it happen. From world-renowned faculty and staff, dynamic students, and community leaders, stay connected to CSI with CSI Today Talks. And now, here is your host, Terry Mayers. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the CSI Today Talks podcast on CSIToday.com or from wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. This is Terry Mayers, co-host of CSI Today Talks, here to bring you the latest episode, Season 1, Episode 15. Today we're talking to Michael Ivani, CSI Student Government President. Before we get to Michael, we want to remind you to make sure that you subscribe to our podcast. Co-host David Pizzuto and I will look to bring you new episodes often. Like this episode coming up, all of our episodes are available via our archive on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, from our website at www.csitoday.com, or from wherever you found us today. So let's get right into it. Thanks for joining us, Michael. How are you today? Well, I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, just fine, thanks. Why don't we begin, first of all, by discussing some of the basics regarding student government at CSI. You know, what's its general purpose, uh, other functions that it does. So student government's general purpose is to be the voice of the students. We're an advocating body on behalf of them to the college, the faculty, the staff, the admin, just kind of saying what the students' needs are. And alongside that, we also promote opportunities for students and uh, event planning and things like that. So now let's discuss some of student government's specific roles and activities, and feel free to extrapolate here. Sure. So on student government, there's a president, a vice president, and 23 senators. Uh, all have been voted in via the student election. Mm -hmm. And then at one of the first student government meetings, uh, a couple senators are put into commissioner seats. And these commissioner seats oversee pretty much most aspects of the college. It's a student voice connected to a portion. So we got the commissioner on academic and curricular affairs. This student would talk to the provost rather frequently and say, hey, students don't feel like Core 100 should be its own course. Let's see if we could uh, put some other options there for that general requirement. We've got the campus center and student facilities. Students and faculty alike all know that sometimes the bathrooms aren't the most clean and this is a voice to go to VP Hope uh, and say, hey, there's some issues on campus. Let's talk about them. Okay. We got the club commission, which oversees all 40 clubs, elections, part-time evening weekend, student accessibility and veterans affairs, student services, and that's pretty much all of them. It oversees many facets of the college. Okay. Now, what are some of the more popular student government sponsored events that have taken place before the pandemic, back when things were so-called normal? So before the pandemic, um, I know each semester there's the club carnival slash club fair, and those are kind of the most popular ones by student government, where it's kind of just this big extravaganza. In, in the spring, we do like carnival rides and whatnot, uh, and in the fall, it's more indoor, it's cozy. Um, some other events is sometimes student government throws uh, dances and uh, networking opportunities for students. Now, I wasn't part of the Senate pre-pandemic, but I did attend some events, and they were really fun. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Now, when the pandemic came along, first of all, were there any new innovations that you folks undertook as a result of that? Oh, when the pandemic came on, student government really had to take a minute and figure out how we were going to become the voice of the students if all the students were online. Um, and some innovations that we did was kind of more connection with them via social media. And uh, our Senate had to move completely online and offer out the Zoom link to anyone uh, interested in attending. Okay. 
And what things stayed the same? I'm guessing the structure of student government, obviously, but anything mm -hmm. else? So our commissions and committees have the option to go on Zoom, and our full Senate of 25 is fully in person. Now that more students are physically on campus, what are some of the things that student government has done over the course of the last two semesters in, in an effort maybe to get things closer to what normal was? So over the last two semesters, we really looked at um, kind of how the pandemic was going and with that, what events we were able to do. And we noticed that things were loosening up a little. Things were getting, quote unquote, safer. Uh, people knew how to <laughs> wash their hands, wear masks, social distance. Mm -hmm. So we were able to make networking events like we did the um, spring school spirit week. We did the um, club fair this semester. Last semester was a little more distant but we were able to do it. We really wanted to bring students back on campus and get them engaged, not just in the classroom, but also out of the classroom. Okay, now, you know, we're still talking about things that are going on with student government on campus, and we have commencement, our first in-person commencement in two years, coming up in yep. about a little over two weeks. What is student government's role going to be with that event? So student government was asked by the admin if we could assist in the funding of the event. Mm -hmm. So something that we did was we're funding the chairs it's like I don't know, like five or six thousand chairs uh we were asked to assist in the funding of the streaming uh service and uh i think we're also asked for lights and sound um and student government was more than willing to help out because an in-person commencement would be really amazing for our students and uh something that we're doing is we're working with the foundation on the class gift uh, helping to promote that out. Any student graduating can, I think it's donate 10 to $22 and they'll receive some da tassels on graduation day. And we're also going to be there on graduation day, kind of cheering on all of our students that are graduating. Okay, sounds good. Uh, now, let's go outside the college gates. What role does student <laughs> government play in the community at large? Student government's main focus is the college, but with the outside community, something is like alumni reach out or kind of finding people that would be willing to, from outside, come inside and do speaking engagements. Uh, someone that's a, let's say, accounting professional on the island and wants to share their wisdom with our accounting students. Student government's a good medium to go through for something like that. Let's talk about student involvement. How can the mm -hmm. average CSI student get involved with student government? Oh, there's so many ways. Uh, attending an event, attending a meeting, coming to a commission or a committee, uh, reaching out via email. I think it's just student government at uh, CSI. Um, if they have any suggestions, they're always free to come to the student government office and want to see. There's, there's a lot of options. We're open. Um, and yeah, if they want to get involved with us, just stop by the office and say, hey, I have this idea. Okay. Fair enough. And um... You could also, as a student, run for office. Could you explain the process on, on how to do that? So every semester, there's a point where there's the nomination period. An email will be sent out by the uh, Office of Student Life to the student broadcast. And it'll say, hey, nominate yourself now. And then you go on CSI, um, CSI Connect and fill out this form saying, I want to run for this seat on the Student Government Senate. And then you write a little platform statement. You have a little orientation, just kind of, you know, really talk about responsibility and roles. And then the election period happens, and you tell people to go vote for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's shift now and talk a little bit about you. Uh, how did you get involved with student government? My freshman year, my goal was to not be involved. <laughs> but okay. that's impossible for me. <laughs> and I got involved with the radio station. They say Staten Island, and then from there, I just kind of really did a little deep dive investigation of what I'm actually doing uh, with my student activity fee. Every student pays $140 per semester, and I just wanted to know where all that goes. So I followed the, the trail, met the CSI Association Accounting Office, and they're like, you should run for student government. You have a, a knowledge of this, maybe be the finance commissioner. Um, then I did that, got the, uh, got the senator seat, then the commissioner seat. And then the pandemic happened and kind of had to figure out things from there. Okay. 
And you want to discuss a little bit more uh, the time that you've been in student government, uh, some of the positions you've held, some of the programs you've initiated, that sort of thing? Sure. So I started, man, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I 20... know that this semester has been very hectic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's the 2019, 2020, no, the other one, 2020, 2021 student government. I uh, got on and became the finance commissioner. On that seat, I kind of looked at the student activity fee and things like that. Um, there's this term allocating bodies and um, where the student activity fee is the way that it's used and the approval processes. And I worked up a little plan on streamlining the process because sometimes it could take about two months for the process to complete. And I went, that's a little, man, that's like half the semester. Let's see if we could streamline this. and. I've been working with the association and student life on doing that. Um, that's going to be happening probably next year. Um, and then 21, 22, I got the presidency and uh, I've been really trying to look at student engagement and involvement and promoting all the amazing opportunities we have with our campus activities board, the radio station, publications, clubs, you name it. We got it. If you're interested in something, you could always start a club and find an interest group. It's uh we have just so many opportunities that our students don't know about. And my goal joining student government is to show them what we have. Okay. Any ideas on how to promote that? So one of the biggest things is communication, right? Right. Um, it's reaching out saying, hey, there's this thing going on. Uh, it, there's, have you heard this? Go to your classes. Go to other classes. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm friends with all my professors, which is kind of weird to say. Oh, that's and good. I've shown up to the classes on Zoom and said, hey, guys, there's a school spirit week going on. Go check it out. It's going to be on campus all week, all these events. And it actually worked. We had a we had a really good turnout. Other ways of marketing is emails, phone calls, text messages. Uh, every class has a group chat. You can post a flyer in there and people are like, whoa, I didn't know that was happening. Okay. It's just really just that communication is key. So you're seeing good results so far? Yeah, we have really good results because if you think about it, there's 25 people on the Senate and just having all 25 of them go get 10 people, that's that's a lot of people. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, now you've mentioned some of the things that you've done uh, before you were student government president and mm -hmm. also within your current role. Uh, what are some of the other things that define your role as president of student government? Well, you don't just sit on the Senate. You also sit on the CSI Association. You sit on the Auxiliary Services Board. You sit on the College Council. And you also have to join many just odd ad hoc committees, like the School Spirit Week Committee or the Commencement Committee, and just be that main student voice to the admin or staff uh, and that committee. Okay. Now, what are your favorite aspects of being involved with student government, whether it be president or you know being a senator or being a member of the committees, just let me know you know how you feel about that. Honestly, it's it's really unique. It's this leadership opportunity. It's you have the just ability to take on this responsibility and become a like student plus, so to speak. You get to just sit down with the president or vice president, and just have a chat with them on what's going on in the college and really understand the inner workings and what's going on. Um, you also get to do other opportunities. Like I got to meet a queen because uh, she was a CSI graduate. Um, and I met the board of trustees at that. And we had other senators come along, which was really cool. In three weeks, we're going to York College and meeting other student leaders around CUNY, doing this little CUNY training and networking. And it just opens the door for many opportunities that you wouldn't have as an average student. Okay, Michael. Now, next, let's talk about your academic career here at CSI. First of all, what factors led you here? Honestly, and a lot of people say this, it's the affordability. I applied to a bunch of SUNYs, CUNYs, NYU, uh, and some other ones, Albany, and a lot of them are expensive, and I was completely undecided, not knowing what I wanted to go into, so I said, let me just go to something local, something affordable, and see what I'm going to do. Okay. And uh, what's your major, if you have a minor, and why did, why did you choose those? So, <laughs> little story. Okay. Uh, my current major is business management 
and accounting. I'm double majoring. Then I have minors in corporate communications, finance, and biology. That's enough yeah. to keep you busy. <laughs> <laughs> a okay. little bit. Why, why um, did you choose these? So when I first came to CSI, I was like, I don't know what I want to do. So I just looked into like a few different things. I'm part of the Verizon Honors, and um, I'm lucky to have an advisor that's like, hey, you don't know what you want? Here's like a little track for first year undecided. And you get a little taste of communications, business, art, uh, English, and just kind of those core requisites alongside of it. Um, and at first I was like, okay, I want to do biology. This sounds fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but I uh, didn't really like chemistry that much and they're very, they're very close knit community. Uh, so I went, mm, maybe not this, but I looked at psychology, I looked at communications, and then I looked at the business world with marketing and management and accounting. And then I went, oh, these are, these are pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> so then I just went, all right, I'm going down this track and here I am now. All right. Now, I understand that your honors capstone project is on the student activity fee. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I sat down with my advisor and went, all right, so this thing's coming, this capstone. you got to do it before you graduate. I don't know what I want to do. And she went, well, what are you doing? And I just listed, like, my major, my minor, and my extracurricular activities. And she went, wow, you're really involved with these things regarding the student activity fee. And I went, oh, huh. You're right. And then she was like, well, you have an accounting background. Why don't you try to think about it, get back to me, and see what you could do. And then I proposed to her, uh, I'll look at three similar CUNYs, including CSI, and their use of the student activity fee. Um, the fee gets earmarked for certain groups, which then gets used for students and their engagement, and just kind of see a general use and engagement level of students at those colleges. How's it going so far with this? It's going pretty well. Um, I was lucky to choose these, uh, like CUNY in particular, because everything's online. We're a public institution. And if I ever have a question, I just reach out to whomever is in charge of the association at that college. So at ours, it's Mary Ann McLaughlin. I knocked on her door, walked in her office, and I had like a three hour chat about it. And it's really useful. Okay, now, student government president. 21 hours yep. of courses per semester on average. Uh, <laughs> but we were corresponding prior to this interview via email. And you mentioned some other things that you're involved in. I can't fathom how you can find the time for this, uh, but congratulations. But why don't we talk a little bit about some of these roles uh, outside of student government. I understand, first of all, that you're uh, the program director at WSIA. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about what you're doing there? Sure. So, did say Staten Island 88.9 FM, Staten Island's only FM radio station, is just amazing. It's a really great opportunity that we have. And I, uh, since my freshman year, was like, this is just a really cool place to hang out and learn. It really, like, made my leadership ability happen. So right now I'm the programming director. I'm the kind of head honcho, so to speak. And I listen to what we sound like on air curate our sound, make sure our music is good, our people are well-trained and know the FCC rules and regulations. And it's just, uh, I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I find it so fun. <laughs> I can attest to that. I was program director at my college radio station. and uh, But I understand, you know, it is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of time, but at the same time, you're helping people who are interested in radio get their legs it's really cool and like people say you gotta like love what you do otherwise you're gonna just be bored and hate it and me just getting so involved is really what i love doing and just uh the radio is so fun okay. <laughs> before programming director i was the personnel director which is in charge of uh recruitment and training and it's just just these stepping stones that just really just they're just so they're entertaining you know uh, yeah, I understand that too. It's um, I was music director before I was program director. So, yeah, it's uh, radio is a wonderful world. Uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't understand that, but I I totally do. Okay, and within your role as student government president, uh, you also mentioned that you're a member of the auxiliary services board. What is entailed there? So the auxiliary services oversees uh, aspects of the college that. Kind of the college does, like, academia doesn't look over, so it's like parking, dorming, dining, bookstore, 
and a few other aspects. It's day to day. Yeah, day to day. That's their like job. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's cool to have the opportunity for a student to speak in on these. So the parking lots sometimes get a little disheveled over time, and students are the main ones that see those. So being a student on the board saying, "Hey, I almost got a flat in this this area," and they're like, "Oh, we'll fix this. Thank you for telling us." Or the dining, if there's more options we want, whether it's uh, a halal option or a kosher, they'll they'll listen to you and try to implement it so they could do best by our students. And you're also a member of the college council. What do you do there? So the college council is a little scary for a student. It's like, I don't know, the number is like 300 faculty and staff on a Zoom, and they're like, hey, there's all these things going on. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's crazy. And as a student, I'm like, oh, wow, I never would have heard this before so like a academic department wants to do wants to do more recruitment or another one wants to make some events and opportunities and sitting there as a student it's like whoa there's a lot of inner workings going on and then I come in and speak about like the school spirit week or opportunities that the student activity fee is providing and it's a really interesting place (laughs) yes it is and um, you're also a member of the association board what's your role there so the association board is like the core of the student activity fee. Uh, they kind of say, they hear all the budgets and budget modifications and discuss policy and procedure with it. It's really kind of the bulk of the background of getting events done through student government or the campus activities board. Uh, and it's split between faculty, staff, admin, and students to really encompass, hey, let's, let's do best by them. They're paying this fee. Let's make sure that it's being used properly, appropriately, and equitably. Okay. And any other things that you're doing besides the ones we just talked about? A lot of sleeping. (laughs) How can you find the time? (laughs) Hey, I always get my eight hours in no matter what. Well, that's good. It's good good for the health to to do the eight hours. Uh, All right, Michael. Um, Now, again, keeping on the focus of you, What are some of your favorite aspects of CSI? There's a lot. One of the main things is just the opportunities that are open. Just There's so many leadership experience for students. I know everyone focuses on needing an internship, but this makes it kind of like, in my opinion, like a step higher because it's student volunteering. It's the opportunity to go in and say, hey, I have this amazing idea and I have the kind of freedom to do it. I can petition for the money from student government and I'm going to start this club. I want to make a club for accounting and really promote accounting throughout the college. Um, just the just the sense of opportunity and freedom that students have is amazing. Okay, one final question, Michael. What does your future look like after CSI? Uh, well, that's going to be a year from now. I uh, I still got another year. I ran for a second term, and uh, according to this email, it's been officialized, which is cool. Uh, I got president for a second second year. Thank you. Um, But after CSI, I'm looking at getting a CPA, a certified public accounting, and I'm not sure what I want to do with that. I don't know if I want to work at like a big firm, whether like the top five, or if I want to work something more kind of smaller, local. That's just kind of for the future to tell me. Um, Or I have other opportunities open with just everything I've been doing. Um, I wouldn't mind working at the college. This place is so fun and cool, and um, just kind of the future holds Whatever it is, just riding the wave at this point. And you still have some time to figure that out, too. So, no rush. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today, Michael, and uh, talking about student government and talking about all the things that you do here on the CSI campus. Well, thank you for inviting me. All right. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks again for listening. Coming up next week, David Pizzuto rejoins the show on CSI Today Talks. Check us out, as well as all the newsmakers at CSI, on www.csitoday.com, and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you next week, right here on CSI Today Talks. Thank you for listening to this edition of the CSI Today Talks podcast. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to get alerted for brand new episodes and to listen on demand to your favorites. Be sure to check us out at www.csitoday.com or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.